We've got four fabulous presenters who've already been interviewed, uh, actually, this morning. Um, and they've been interviewed by uh, a group of judges who I would like to introduce you to. Um, Prof Professor Rosalind Smith. Ros, stand up so everybody can see you. And Professor Diane Donai and Professor David Rubenstein. Um, please give them a warm round of applause. Um, they've been working hard on your behalf. Um, and I should say that um, we, and by we I mean the Lancet, are truly delighted to support the Academy in this meeting with the abstract book um, and apparently with some prizes which involve money, I gather. Is that right, Rachel? How much? A little bit. A few thousand here and there, I think. Um, so we're very glad to be supporting those prizes. I do just want to, um, if I may, just say a few words because I was thinking a little bit about... Um, uh, Garrett's talk this morning, um, and I don't know if he's here, but he may, he may have gone. Um, but last week I was at uh, a research institute in Paris called Sciences Po. Um, it's a kind of political science research centre, and they were hosting a meeting of seven of the leading schools of public policy from around the world. They had 32 uh, teams presenting their abstracts. Um, so a little bit like here, except instead of being given 15 minutes like we're giving the presenters today, they had 180 seconds. Um, they had three minutes to present their abstract. Um, it was fantastic. It was all about how you solve the sustainable development goals, and every presenter was full of optimism um, and excitement and energy about what their work could achieve. And the winner was actually about how you... Uh, it's a team from Japan about how you could improve care for older people in Japan's rapidly aging population. By contrast, with the energy and the excitement and the optimism of the uh, master's students who were presenting, the jury were terrible. Um, the jury were the six deans of these, six or seven deans of these uh, public po policy schools. Um, and they were just the most depressing people to hang out with. Um, <laughs> They were world-weary. Uh, so you mentioned Europe, and they were totally anxious about what's going to happen to Europe. Trump, fear. Um, the world, in terms of security, total uncertainty. The economy, no chance of recovery. Human brotherhood and sisterhood, vanished long ago, no chance of return. For them, the world was terrible, uh, and they were just completely depressing people. That's what we call wisdom today, um, or that's what goes for wisdom too often in our professoriate. Uh, and to contrast the optimism and the energy and the solution-based thinking of a new generation with that world weariness was, at least for me in Paris last week, an interesting contrast. Nothing like we've got today here I need to underline, but I do want to add one dimension to Garant's presentation this morning where he was talking about um, uh, his experiences and that is the importance, and this came out last week and it's come out in the interviews today, the importance of not losing your capacity, actually for all of us, not just you, all of us, not losing our capacity to be surprised by what we see uh, clinically or in our lives, shocked sometimes enraged, maybe often excited, fascinated by what is going on around you. It's that sense of newness. Every time you see something, you're seeing it for the first time, and you feel that sense of whatever it is, shock, rage, excitement. It's retaining that that gives you the motivation and I think the optimism when things can get tough. And that's what had been lost by our poor deans uh, in Paris last week. And the four speakers you're going to hear today have already communicated to us um, how their passion has informed their work and why they have the passion for the work that you're going to hear about. And now you are going to uh, have the pleasure of hearing them and why they're doing what they're doing and what they have found.